the most important thing is uh, what has the FBI done to investigate the validity of the claim? Because I explained to Director Ray, this is consistent with a pattern that we found with Joe Biden when he was vice president leaving a country after presenting a foreign aid check. If we didn't have this document in my hand by Tuesday or Wednesday of next week, then the House Oversight Committee will vote to hold him in contempt of Congress. That's House Oversight Chair James Comer getting one step closer to holding FBI Director Christopher Wray in contempt for stiff-arming Congress. For weeks, Chairman Comer has been asking Wray, including with a subpoena, for an FBI forum that Republicans say includes a bribery allegation against then-Vice President Joe Biden. Wray told Comer he can see that document, but he has to go to the FBI headquarters to look at it in person. Comer said, nope. He wants that document delivered to Capitol Hill with zero redactions. A White House spokesperson saying it this way. This silly charade by Chairman Comer is yet another reminder that his so-called investigations are political stunts. Hmm. Former House Intelligence Chairman Devin Nunes is urging his former colleagues, don't let the FBI off the hook. For me, as you know, just an American out here now, not, not elected to the Congress anymore, there is no way in holy hell that Ray should be able to get away with what he got away with in 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, and don't even get started in what Durham uncovered, where essentially nobody was prosecuted at the DOJ and FBI. They are hopelessly corrupt, if I could put it lightly. Ben Domenech, Fox News contributor and editor at large for The Spectator. So, Ben, what do you make of this? It's, it's a standoff for certain, but Congress can subpoena. Doesn't the FBI have to capitulate? Well, they should, uh, Harris, in any kind of working relationship, institution to institution. Uh, the FBI should have to respond to this subpoena. But we've seen, uh, you know, past situations where, you know, frankly, the folks who are over there at the Department of Justice and at the FBI have, have been uh, very reluctant to hand things over, even under congressional subpoena. Uh, just to give you one pre prior example, you know, you may remember that Eric Holder was found in contempt of Congress by the whole Congress. 255 people, including 17 Democrats, voted mm -hmm. to hold him in contempt when he refused to hand over information about the fast and furious uh, gun running program in Mexico uh, that obviously created so much consternation. Uh, that was a really something that was, you know, a long time coming in terms of the, the fact that he had prevented the Congress from gaining access to documents that they absolutely had the right to see. This same thing is happening now with Christopher Wray. He is essentially saying that they cannot access something that is unclassified, that he can't hand it out to the full committee, that if they are going to see it, they're only going to see a redacted version of it, which will probably just be essentially one page covered with lines of black, uh, because you know that the FBI overredacts all of these things. Well, uh, and frankly, it's, it's a sign of how much disrespect they have for our nation's elected representatives, exactly. uh, that they would be engaged in this type of completely inappropriate uh, behavior. And I hope that they yeah. do uh, hold him in contempt uh, for this, because it's clear that he's treating uh, Congress with disrespect uh, in a way that is, uh, you know, unfortunate, but what we've come to expect from the FBI. Well, and it's that, that's what I was going to point to, because this is like a game of fetch. Like the FBI says, you want it? Then come to my house. Yeah, come over here, <laughs> crawl and get it. I mean, that is the ultimate of disrespect. Uh, the they White don't even House... have the classification excuse in this case, Harris, which is, you know, typically what they turn to. They don't have that. This is a document that is unclassified. You know, Chairman right. Grassley uh, and Chairman Comer are obviously, uh, you know, completely justified to be as furious as they are. White House National Security Council spokesman John Kirby was left speechless before blowing off a reporter's question showing a majority of Americans say they believe Biden engaged in illegal influence peddling. Watch. What do you say to the majority of Americans who believe that the president is himself corrupt? Wow. <laughs> president, the president, the president has spoken to this. Uh, the president has spoken to this. Uh, and there's nothing to these claims. He, the president has spoken to being accused of being corrupt? I, I, I'm sorry, John Kirby, and a lot of people have a lot of respect for John Kirby. You know, he's someone who's viewed as being uh, taken seriously, unlike some of the other people on the president's uh, press uh, team. Uh, and that's one of the reasons that he's uh, in this role. 
that is a ludicrous answer. The president has not spoken to these issues. It was certainly with not any specificity. He simply denied things on their face without ever having to answer serious questions or address them in a serious way. And that's uh, one of the reasons why I think these, the poll data does show that you know a majority of Americans feel this way, which something which may come as a surprise to the people at the White mm -hmm. House who seem to pretend like none of this matters. But it, over time, when you see the president being the opposite of transparent, the opposite of answer, answering any kind of questions, then you eventually come to the conclusion maybe there's something there. And certainly there's a, an abundance of evidence that would suggest well, that these are questions that we need the answers to yeah, in order to have confidence. It in. doesn't stop you from asking the questions. It just makes you want to keep asking the questions just yeah. to see what's what's underneath door, you know, the, behind door number two. Uh, more than a month now since the president announced his reelection bid and highly produced video. Remember that? Well, he hasn't held any significant 2024 events since then. And yesterday, the president even laughed when asked, here we go again, asking questions. Why are we doing it? Well, we did it again. We asked a question about that. Mr. President, how's, how's the re-election campaign going? Because we haven't seen you on the campaign trail yet. We haven't. Not at an official campaign rally. No, why not? No information out of the press secretary as well. I, you look all shocked about that, Ben. Um, <laughs> and well, there's I'm, pretty I'm a much a worried. standard default. I'm a default. little worried, Harris. I'm a little worried, Harris, because there's two options here. One is that he's doing his normal thing of making fun as opposed to answering a question. The other is maybe he's been under the assumption that he is holding campaign events. And if he is, oh, don't that's do that. uh, its own kind of kettle of fish. That's uh, that's actually far yeah. more disturbing if he thinks he has been out on the campaign trail. You can't trail imagine thousands of people gather before you at a campaign event. It either happens <laughs> or it doesn't. So I, I'm hoping that's not the option here. Uh, yeah, I, I, I hope so, too. I yeah, hope so, too, Harris. Ben Domenech, I don't know if you caught it earlier, but Robert Kennedy Jr. wants the chance to debate. He said that the American people are owed that, and particularly where this president is with questions about acuity, so on and so forth. So we'll have mm -hmm. Kennedy on tomorrow, and we'll see, you know, what happens down the road. We'd love to cover that debate if it ever should happen. Ben, thank you. Hey everyone, I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.